Hi guys, welcome, it's The Bear here. We've got quite a different video on the flanker. Obviously you can hear my voice. The previous videos have been in a music type format. And uh, yeah, they show you a few things, but they don't tell you the story. So this is probably gonna be the most unpopular video in this series, but will definitely be the most useful to those that are building the actual kit. So I'm just gonna tell you basically my thoughts up to this point. I'm basically, you're looking at the model just prior to its painting. So I've got it in the sub-assembly stage, basically as I have uh, planned to paint it, which obviously be the next series of videos. So I'm just gonna tell you basically what I've found instruction-wise, uh, what I've found with build and fit issues, and uh, hopefully this could be quite useful to those considering uh, purchasing or building this mini base uh, Su-33. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna say is that I'm gonna stand by my review and that, um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, not an overly complex model. It's just got many, many parts. So let's get away from this term engineering and all that sort of nonsense and just deal with the fact that there's lots of small parts. The very first video was the build of that ejector seat. What you're not getting from the videos is the fact that there's a good maybe uh, 20 hours in that small subcomponent. And then we went on, we built the gear, um, the main landing gear and the nose gear, added supplemental detail, which basically you need to do. But out of the box, I mean, they are pretty fantastic. There wasn't any issues at all in that construction. Uh, basically, everything goes together quite well in terms of sub-assemblies. But when we got to the actual construction of fuselage, and this is obviously you know, a major point of the build, uh, there are some issues. I mean, for the first thing that we need to point out is the um, assembly of the wings. And this kit definitely, I think it has a bias to be built in the wing fold position. Now, what the instructions don't mention to you uh, is, well, it does show you, it shows you plenty of options for these flaps, how you can have them arranged. But in reality, if you're gonna have the wing fold, you need to have the outer wings, uh, the flap sections need to be um, in the deployed position or else they just simply will not clear the tail planes. So that's not pointed out in the instructions. And also when you check your references, you'll see that there's many different configurations, but basically the way that you see these aircraft, if they have the wings folded is these need to be basically folded up and then for some reason the uh, the slats on the outer section are actually retracted on the inner section they're deployed and then the flaps at the rear you'll actually find that they are not deployed so it's a real mixture but check your references and uh, obviously consult them uh, when it comes to the build uh, we'll talk about the flaps as well um, these sort of link joints here are superfluous and also they can be problematic as well because when it comes to the main assembly joint you're meant to trap these in between the wing sections so that you can sort of play with them these that's not the way i, I built it as you can see from the outer sections these are locked solid there's no movement whatsoever and you need to be especially careful with this outer uh, flap section in order for it to clear the tail so I've actually had to bend mine further. You can see I've only got very, I only use light amounts of adhesive and that allows me to flex that out. And I need to bend that further in order to clear the tail section. Um, what else has been, the, the, the basic build itself is pretty easy. Uh, but when it comes to the construction of the fuselage, you saw in the last video, uh, maybe it was a little bit difficult to make out, but the method that I use to construct it is stitch joining it because basically you've got the fit between the upper and lower halves uh, was, you know, it's not that easy to do. Um, you can actually, you'll hear it when I, if I sort of press this, you can hear the sound of the plastic and the basic fit is fine basically don't get me wrong there but in order to get this joined up and everything in alignment I worked from the back forward so I 
basically apply liquid cement as in the video, use pressure, use clamps, etc. Worked my way all the way forward. Everything fits fine. There's no, there's nothing bulging out. There's nothing that bad. And then um, eventually got that joined, but it did take a while to do so. Yeah, so I just recommend that. And if you were to follow the instructions, which would have you basically joining in bits of flap, uh, joining in the canards, I think you would have a real problem uh, trying to get it together using that method. The other thing that you may have picked up from the video is the modifications I made. Principally, this one here, I added in sections of rod here that will support the, um, the tailorons, uh, basically, because that would be a plastic joint, and the plastic joint isn't going to basically have any strength to it. So I've inserted some metal rod. That allows me, obviously, to allow the, the painting to be a lot easier. I can paint the tail plane separately, and then I can slot it into place. Uh, the other thing I need to point out as well, I've got these, these are joined on, but you can see this problematic gap here that will get filled with some card here. Um, that is just, it's just not a good fit. Um, I couldn't see why. The other thing you need to pay attention to is the alignment of the tail sections. They are basically vertical, like 90 degrees to the fuselage. Again, check your references. I had to make sure that they were being built correctly. Uh, these lower sections, I don't know what the technical term for them, for them are, but they're part of the empennage. These aren't even called out on the instructions. They've totally uh, ignored them, but it's quite self-explanatory how they go on. Um, I just needed to check fit them to see which one went in the left, which one went in the right. Um, let's point out some positives. The positives, first of all, is, is the gear as well. The fact that they've made this a lot easier by having you, um, you've got all the detail in there, but a plus point is that you've got this peg that allows you just to basically um, sit the landing gear into position when you're ready. So that's a really good plus. The other plus as well is the uh, nose landing gear as well. That can be fitted in, you know, right at the end. So it allows you to, um, to make the painting process easier. What else do I need to mention? The construction of these, um, the air intakes, the uh, engine housings, really good, really good fit um, there. Um, no problems whatsoever. That goes together quite well. Um, no problems at all. You can see I'm in the middle of, like I've taken this, this video is being done prior to me tidying up that you did see in the previous video. So it's a bit out of context, but Basically, fit of the nose is okay. There is a bit of a step here, so I'm working that. Uh, but you know, it's nothing unusual, uh, nothing, you know, out of out of uh, ordinary. Basically, with that, um, my concerns were around the gear. You know, these gear bays, lots of detail, lots of parts and pieces. Uh, really fantastic that they do this, but would it? cause a problem in the fit and it didn't actually all these fits all these parts fit really easily really nicely um, and no and it doesn't interfere with the join of the fuselage so that's it now the other point and I, I need to point this out um, this is going to be this is the biggest problem area on this kit it's the actual wing join um, and I'm going to show you what the problem is basically They've gone to great lengths to give you all the detail here, including this uh, piano hinge type arrangement. Now, that piano hinge uh, basically means that you need to align all these little pieces with all these little pieces here. So when you slot this in, you'll see that they don't basically, you know, you can see them aligning but they don't fit in because the tolerance is so tight. So there's two ways to do that. You have to use sandpaper to sort of thin them all down, which is, I'll probably try that, but more likely you're gonna use liquid glue to um, soften the joints so that you can get them uh, lined up properly as they, can, as they should be. The other problem is this, this photo etch, these photo etch parts, you can't, it's very, very difficult, somebody can probably do it, not myself, to get them totally aligned 
that allow this uh, hinge joint to fit in. And I've basically come to the conclusion that I don't really want them there anymore. So you can see on this section, I've actually removed the PE detail and it's not detrimental at all. All that it allows now is this section to be fitted fully home, which is what you need. You need it properly, um, you know, seated or else the wing is going to be proud of where it should be. And I'm just going to show you, look at how tight the join is here with the, uh, with the flaps. So I think the better method of doing this would be to basically have all this assembly done and then maybe do the wings later so you can get the right angle posed. But because I use light cement, as I pointed out, I'm able to flex this out a little bit, give it a further bend. So that's basically it. I don't think I've got any further comments really on the construction, except for, oh, the other thing as well, similar to what I did here, adding wire or rod here, I added, as you can see in the other video, I added in pieces of rod into the canards so that these can um, basically just be popped into place when ready. Yeah, it just eases the painting. And also, I mean, relying on plastic for this join here, it just doesn't work. Um, I think, uh, yeah, okay, what I, what I would have liked to have seen, let's put it that way, okay, how, how, this, how could this have been better? What would have been much better with like a Tamiya polycap type arrangement? That works really well. Um, that would have been preferential to the way it's made. So I'm just going to advise you now that um, you know, there's other ways of doing it, but you need some strength because these parts, you know, they've got a fair bit of leverage on them. And also, remember, we've also got the the outer portion as well. So they have got a bit of, you know, a little bit of weight acting on a small joint there in plastic. I think, yeah, it'd be a fail point as well. Now, the other way, of course, is to cement it solidly in place all along there. Another method, and it works perfectly well. But... I've, I've done it this method so I can paint my sub-assemblies separately. Uh, whew, what else is that point out? This area here, nothing really to mention uh, to allow you to have the folded up. Um, um, it's like an ECM type hump. Or, I don't know what they call it. Stinger, I think they call it Stinger on the flanker. Uh, the fit on these slat sections is absolutely perfectly fine. Nothing at all to mention there. So these can be fitted on easily later see that's a nice solid connection you know it's not being um, made out to depict how it looks in reality that's just a solid plug connection which gives you strength and you actually you need some strength certainly when it comes to these flight control surfaces uh, what else am i doing at the moment um, as usual you need to use some fillet typical canopy type join situation here um, and also i think we'll be i'll point out later on that will add some detailing as per references around there but uh, yeah I mean overall you know fit is okay in some ways it's actually easier than you know some of the jet models because you've only got the you know top to bottom join so you haven't got any you know dorsal ventral seams to deal with you've got like a little bit of filling to do as normal but you know nothing, nothing massive nothing difficult and um, so overall, I think I'd give this like a, it's definitely okay. Let's let's put it. Let's sort of try and gauge it. It's not a Tamiya type fit, but it's not a bad fit. You know, it's there's nothing terrible about it. It's very buildable. That's what I'd like to say. Now let's talk a little bit about the instructions, and I'll tell you what I found out. Okay, the first time I mentioned, I think this book type format, um, the sixty odd pages is excellent. You sort of need it, yeah. It could be even bigger, but you know, that's a manageable size. The instructions work out really well. The thing that sort of makes it a little bit busy is the amount of paint call outs. And I had to cross reference all the time, of course, um, paints, etc. And, you know, in quite a few areas, there's details called out. Um, in some areas, though, it's a little bit difficult to see how parts fit because 
they don't rely on a, uh, they're, they're nearly like a butt joint. So you need to look very carefully at the parts to see how they line. So some, like for an instance there, you just see an arrow going to that. But just check later on to see how it works out. Um, what have I found? I found that there's a few incorrect call outs. I tried to show that in, in the video basically. For instance, they've got this mirror. This is D14, this uh, air intake here. They call out D15. Most of you will spot that as you work through the build. Um, but in some cases, it can be quite frustrating because they do that in a few places. And, um, you know, if, if you follow the wrong parts and build it up, you're going to have, you know, a big error. Uh, this is really worth pointing out here. This is the landing gear locks. And I'm just going to, I'll show you the part in a second but this is the most difficult part of the kit i think uh trying to uh, these well they're very small parts they've got a very small connection joint as well and to be honest this this would have been really good in photo etch if it had been a photo etch fold-up part with the um with with some of the piston detail being added in it would have been a lot better to what they have which is really quite fiddly and quite difficult and also it's telling you here to place them in to their location slots now i haven't done that because i know that i need to make sure that they line up um, with the gear because this lock has an interface onto the gear strut so i'm going to do that at the final assembly stage um, that's that's the only thing that i've got to mention about that just be wary of it you know, try and move away from that instruction step. And um, I'll show you later on during the final assembly how I do it. It might not be too problematic. I just didn't want to risk it, basically. Put that inside there and have troubles joining later on. I didn't want to encounter that. Um... Yeah, nothing. I mean, I've made notes where I basically have some parts that I still need to add on later on. Uh, for instance, some of the the ECM stuff or the IFF aerials. I'm going to add them on later on. That's just standard common sense, isn't it, uh, when it comes to modelling? I think I made a note at the back. Let me just. I was going to list every single thing out. But like page five, um, let's see what that was. Page five, I think I made a note where there's something wrong. Um, I think I remember what it was. Yeah. Basically, when it comes to that nose gear, you have to go all the way to page 33. It's not a biggie at all. I'm just, gonna, I'm just trying to help you guys. But page 33, yeah, that's it here. This, this piece here, it's not called out on the instructions whatsoever. And I should have made a note of it to tell you which one it is. Make sure you don't throw it away, of course. Yeah, you need that. It's the part of the gear strut, um, the actual piece. I'll just show it to you in a second. Yeah, there it is, this little guy. So don't lose him. Yeah, here's that sequence in the instructions that I told you about trying to... I just can't even imagine how anybody would try to do anything like this. Put the canards in, put the flaps in, put the tailor-ons in, and then try and get a good join between fuselage halves. Well, I've shown you my method. I bet there's even better ways um, of doing it, but um, I would recommend moving away from that. Overall, though, though, you know, instructions, remember, you have to use a bit of common sense. They are like part location diagrams. Look forward in places. Um, this is worth pointing out as well. Um, some of the PE, I'm going to show you in a second, is microscopically small. And uh, I wasn't able to bend it, so I didn't even put it on. And that was in the wing fold. Okay, here's an example here, PEA 15 times 3. These are microscopic. I mean, really small. You could probably do them with card action. I should have done that. Actually, I just want to point out as well that I've tried to assemble basically everything I could within the kit, um, you know, to the best of my abilities. 
Uh, this is worth pointing out here as well. There's a call out for PE to be added inside this um, section of the inner flap. But uh, check your references. You'll see that there are actually these holes are visible and this PE will just cover this up. So I'm not too sure what the intent was there, but that's probably worth pointing out to you guys. If you know better from your references, maybe there was a mod made, but from what I've seen of Sukhoi 33s, these uh, lightning holes are evident. So, okay, this is, this is definitely worth noting as well. Like when you see my build, it's all smoke and mirrors. <clears throat> you know, I, I, you see me basically uh, fold this and I glue it in a position. Well, in reality, uh, I couldn't really fold it. What you're meant to do, as it, as it shows here, is fold that section inwards. I couldn't make that bend without distorting the part. So I simply just clipped it off, basically there and there, and just folded in as normal. Um, there was no point making, you know, things too difficult. So I still got the right shape. I just um, basically halved the size of this because to make that fold in there, I couldn't do it um, without distorting the part severely. Um, overall, HUD was really good. What wasn't good was, it's sort of like a mixture here. I mean, they supply this part as a holographic material, which is superb, yeah, which is obviously a reflection onto the HUD. And they've got overall excellent detailing. And then they supply transparent parts that are you know, a little bit too thick. So that's why I cut my own out of some acetate um, sheet. Um, so I thought that was, that was a bit uh, unusual. If, if they'd supplied the hot glass the same as that holographic stuff, well, that would be excellent. But, um, you know, minor quibble. The way they did all this stuff here, you know, really good. Um, I did find out why there's two canopies you use one canopy glass if you want to pose the canopy open and another that hasn't got the detail underneath it if you want to do it closed. Now that is obviously advantageous because we can use the, uh, the version that I'm not going to use, which will be a closed canopy. I can use that to mask off the, the canopy area as well. So I'll probably do that. It's probably worth mentioning as well. I've still got to do the, uh, the pylons and the missiles but this is really straightforward stuff, so we'll just do a separate video. It's just breaking things up, um, but you know there shouldn't be any problems with that as we move forward. I will do a further video on you know if there's anything to do with the painting, masking, whatever, or if there's any further construction difficulties. But I think I've pointed out most of them. Now let's just talk generically about this kit. Um, I think without shadow of a doubt, it's the most detailed 48 scale kit. On the market today the fit is pretty good the details are excellent and it's buildable now um, somebody made a comment in my video something like oh so it's going to take months then well yeah of course it is you know i mean this is about um i think i'm in about seven or eight weeks in this build but i haven't been working every single day on this build i haven't been working from dawn to dusk on this build and eight weeks I tell you what, there's a lot of people out there and they'll readily admit that they can't do an Airfix 172 scale Spitfire in eight weeks. So, um, you know, yeah, it does take time. The main thing is, yeah, uh, let's, let's try and sum up how much time's gone into this. Uh, basically, I showed stuff being built and I made a video. Now, because I had to make a video, it takes longer to actually build because I need to pose all the parts, show your bits and also, um, the painting sequence is different how I would do it if I was not making a video, i.e. I would basically make a lot of sub-assemblies at the same colour and basically do a lot of group, like bunched together painting, but I was painting bits uh, as they happened, so, you know, that was painted separately, that was painted separately, that was painted separately, that was, everything was done separately, so that added on some time. But basically, if we sort of add things up, the seat was basically, I'd say about three or four days to build, three, three days to build, yeah, one day to do the plastic, another part for the resin, and then maybe um, a day painting, a day de uh, uh, weathering and sort of, you know, detail painting. So, you know, a lot of time on that, but basically it's as good as any um, resin, 
aftermarket ejector seat. So, you know, th that's what you'll find. In this, that's how my summary of this kit sort of works out, basically. The, the gear, again, all super detailed, but as good as um, resin aftermarket, maybe superior in some cases. Of course, you had to add the detailing as normal. Um, people are going to say, you know, there's too many parts, too many details, but is there really? I didn't think so, to be honest. Um, we had details on the landing gear, uh, on the wing fold, in the, in the bays, and that's basically, and of course the cockpit, of course, as well, but that's all that you're going to see, yeah? So, um, they haven't gone overboard, in my opinion. I think they've provided the right amount of detail, and it's superb. Um, so that's what you get. Um, somebody said something about the details would become clunky and out of scale. Well, quite clearly they don't. They, they look really excellent. They look in scale. Um, they're equal or better than resin uh, bay replacements, in my opinion. Now, the, um, the sort of trade-off for that, of course, is it takes more time to build it. That's the only trade-off. That's the only if there could be a negative, it takes more time to do this. Could you shortcut it? Yes, you could, um, but I think you would, let's say you want to do it built with the flying configuration. Well, in that case, I wouldn't even buy this kit. I think you'd, you'd sort of be wasting your money uh, in a way. You try and get a cheaper kit, um, or maybe, you know, I don't know if, if the kinetic one's cheaper, but you know, buy, basically getting this kit and detailing it you're going to get the benefits from it if it's displayed gear down wings folded um, that's that's really sort of my opinion that's the way it's uh, obviously going to be showing in 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 when i finish this model eventually uh yeah uh yeah quite a lot of time put in but not masses of time for the result at this stage in time now, I'm trying to think, if I can think of anything else, I'll come back to you. But basically, that's all I've got to say. I, I think it's, it really is an excellent kit, kit. It's not as quick to build. It's not as easy to build as a Tamiya. Why should it be? Uh, it's certainly a lot more detailed than a Tamiya kit. And um, that's what you get. Now, uh, what will be interesting, will anybody you know, bring out further aftermarket details for this? They probably will. I'm thinking about getting a resin pilot. Um, but in terms of, you know, the gear bays, um, the seat, everything's in the box. You don't need it. And that was the whole reason why I built it like so. I had the option to get so much aftermarket for this, but I neglected it purely for the, you know, chance to build out the box. And it actually is a real good case demonstrator for what can be done in plastic injection. In that way, it is really good. Now, I'm just going to go on to one last part of this video just to point something else out. Okay, what it comes down to is uh, in the instructions, there's no... You've got a sprue map, but it doesn't tell you which parts not to use. So there's a sprue map, but it doesn't tell me which parts are not to use. And that is... It's just conjecture. Some of these parts I still need to use, and I know where they go. But there are some parts, like that one there, that is not on the instructions. And it's that one there, that one there as well. I'm wondering, have I missed something? I've checked through the instructions. I can't find out where they go. Are they for a forthcoming variant that hasn't been released yet? Again, I don't know. Um, so, I, But basically, in some cases, some of them are parts that I need to add on. But I found that in a few places that there's you know, parts I'm wondering, you know, have they been missed out of the instructions or are they for a future variant? I don't know because the parts map doesn't tell me which parts not to use. So that's, that's it basically, that's everything to do on terms of this Sukhoi 33 build. Uh, give me your own feedback uh, basically, but I mean, what can I say? Do I recommend it? I recommend it if you want to undertake a kit like this you will not be disappointed. If you want a quick build, obviously don't build this. You know, it's as simple as that. Uh, is this the best kit ever? There's no such thing as the best kit ever. The best kit ever is the one that you like, you enjoy, and I'm really happy I 
took the plunge on this one because it is, you know, like a good, uh, you know, it's a good amount of uh, fun, really. It really is a fun build. Um, it makes you, uh, you know, spend your time, your detailing, and you get rewarded with a really, really nice kit, and hopefully we'll get a nice result. So this is the bear. I'm out of here, and uh, leave your comments below.